coming up. New information tonight in the Fargo restaurant shooting that left a young mother and her son in critical condition. A groundbreaking in West Fargo for the city's brand new fire department headquarters. And a candidate for the Fargo School Board responds after a local writer calls her an extremist. Hello and welcome to the Nightly Review. I'm Tom Tucker. We begin with a look at tonight's headlines, then a closer look with comments tonight from the new head of the North Dakota ACLU, talking about how he wants to help protect the constitutional rights of all North Dakotans. And in tonight's one-on-one -on -one conversation, a candidate for the Fargo School Board responds after a local writer calls her an extremist. But first tonight, a Moorhead woman who was shot along with her infant son at a Fargo restaurant last week may not survive her injuries. A GoFundMe page indicates Lucia Garcia suffered significant brain damage and didn't have a pulse for approximately 15 minutes. Family members say doctors aren't giving them much hope for Garcia's recovery. Her seven-month-old son, Dominique, who was shot in the leg and hand, is expected to recover. Fargo police are searching for a missing girl. Authorities say 13-year-old Gabriella Laframboise was last seen at her South Fargo home yesterday morning. She's described as being 4 feet 9 inches tall and weighs 100 pounds. She was last seen wearing a black crop top sweatshirt and jeans. Anyone with information on the case is asked to contact law enforcement. Fleet Farm is hosting a Memorial Day event in Fargo. The company is teaming up with TAPS for Veterans to honor fallen soldiers by hosting the third annual TAPS Across America. Buglers will sound TAPS at 3 o'clock Monday afternoon at all Fleet Farm stores. A minute of silence will also be observed. Material shortages for builders and contractors are leading to continuing construction delays here in the Red River Valley. Cass County Electric says the wait time for some parts and products is more than a year. The delay means some new developments, homes and buildings under construction may not have power until 2023. Contractors around Fargo say they've been dealing with supply chain issues now for months. Well, after months of planning, the city of West Fargo has broken ground on a new fire headquarters. Mayor Bernie Dardis joined dozens of community members, along with Fire Chief Dan Fuller, at today's celebration. A lot of people are going to look at today and say, hey, you're building a new fire station, that's great. But we've been working behind the scenes for a year with our designer to make sure this building's going to be functional and it has firefighter safety in mind. The $18.5 million state-of-the-art facility off 10th Avenue East should be completed by the fall of 2023. A Texas state senator claims the accused shooter at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas, was born in North Dakota. Senator Roland Gutierrez said in an interview with CNN the 18-year-old was born in North Dakota but didn't say exactly where. The accused shooter most recently lived in and went to high school in Uvalde, Texas, where the shooting happened. Meanwhile, Governor Doug Burgum is directing all government agencies to fly the United States flag and the North Dakota state flag at half-staff in remembrance of the victims of the school shooting in Texas. The directive follows a similar proclamation by President Biden. Governor Burgum is encouraging all North Dakotans to do the same at their homes and their businesses. Police are investigating a death in Grand Forks. Authorities responded Tuesday to an unresponsive man at a home in the 1200 block of North 39th Street. Police say the death does not appear to have been the result of medical issues or natural causes. Grand Forks police say the person had traumatic injuries that don't appear to be self-inflicted. The name of the victim has not yet been released. Automaker Ford is paying the state of Minnesota $320,000 as part of a lawsuit settlement. Minnesota was part of a 40-state lawsuit accusing the automaker of false advertising. Ford was accused of not correctly representing the fuel economy and payload capacity of some cars and trucks between 2011 and 2015. And the Minnesota State Patrol's newest graduating class includes a set of identical twins. Sisters Jamie and Jessica Bird are among a dozen troopers who graduated yesterday from the 14-week training session at Fort Ripley. The twins decided at the same time that they wanted to join the Minnesota State Patrol. 
In a closer look tonight, the new advocacy manager for the North Dakota American Civil Liberties Union says his group expects to address many issues this summer, but says one in particular stands out. We are ramping up for what we expect to be a, a busy year with issues that affect North Dakotans, but particularly abortion rights. I mean, by all indications, the Supreme Court will likely soon overturn Roe v. Wade. And with that, the rights of millions of people across the country and, and all North Dakotans are on the line. Cody Schuler is the former executive director for the FM Coalition to End Homelessness. Schuler says he's ready to fight for the constitutional rights of all North Dakotans. He says he was called to serve in his new role with the state ACLU after working with the group to address issues impacting homeless people at the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. Working to see what we could do, particularly with a moratorium on housing for health and for safety during the early days of the pandemic. And so, you know, we worked on that project together. And that was a really great experience. I think probably one of the things that experience alone made me even more excited about uh, this opportunity that I've now been able to take. Schuler also serves as a commissioner for the Fargo Housing and Redevelopment Authority and serves on the boards of directors for the Fargo Downtown Neighborhood Association and the group called The Human Family. Well, if you find the nightly review is a good way to stay on top of all the important news and happenings in the FM Metro, please be sure to hit subscribe and the bell button below to make sure you're always up to date. Well, time now for a check of the weather. Meteorologist Justin Storm is in the Skywatch Weather Center with a look at tonight's forecast. Thanks, Tom. As we head through this evening into tonight, we're going to see the skies clearing out and our slightly breezy conditions from this afternoon will lighten up around 5 to 10. Temperatures fall to the lower 40s tonight and we'll warm things into the lower 70s for your Thursday afternoon. Plenty of sunshine out there with a subtle breeze out of the south around 5 to 15 miles per hour. Thursday night, we cool things back down close to 50 and another warm day for your Friday. Partly cloudy out there, highs close to 80 degrees with a south wind around 10 to 15 miles per hour. Next chance for showers and storms will come overnight Friday with daily chances for some showers and storms over the weekend, but mostly occurring overnight. It could happen to you or someone you love. One moment, one diagnosis can change everything. Thankfully, there's a program that helps caring people uplift families through a crisis. Lend a hand up, raising financial help and hope through community benefits and online campaigns. A program that boosts generosity so gifts go further. Lend a hand up helps you help your neighbors. Learn more and give at lendahandup.org. Welcome back to the Nightly Review. My guest for tonight's one-on-one -on -one conversation is Fargo School Board candidate Allie Olenberger. The mother, Army veteran, and Microsoft executive was among those involved in the unsuccessful recall attempt last year targeting current school board members. I first asked Olenberger why she decided to get into the race. So ultimately, Tom, you know, my battle with the school board started almost two years ago at this point in time when it was the fight to get our kids back into school when we were coming off of the first COVID lockdown. Um, we had the faith in the system and ensuring that our kids were going to get back into school properly. We got this wonky hybrid situation that didn't do anything great for our kiddos. This distance learning thing didn't really work out. Um, that's when I started to, you know, to kind of start looking through things. And so um, I, this is a natural next fit for me, if you will, when you think about um, the involvement over the last course of two years. So this is me bringing my leadership skills to the table. Um, I've got a vested interest with my kids just, you know, fresh into the school system here, lifelong Fargo resident. So I know what I had when I was a kid. I know what my dad had when he was growing up here in Fargo. Um, and I want the same for my kids. You are a tech executive and a military veteran who has served in combat situations. Talk about how you believe your combined experiences make you a good candidate who possibly can make a difference on the school board. It comes down to one of my number one skills, which is problem solving and collaboration. I am an idea person. I see a problem in front of me and I look at it from seven different angles. Um, and I try to overcome it and bring those along with me to a single solution that all parties can be in, in, in agreement with. So, you know, part of my military training was, was leading people through battles and having to make 
instant split second decisions on life or death. Um, and so, you know, I realize obviously the school board isn't life or death, but there is, there is tough decisions and you have to take into consideration all of these different aspects. Um, I have been trained to do that. Um, I do it in my day job. I have global stakeholders, I have individual stakeholders, different managers, and you bring all of their perspectives to the table and you make the best decision for the greatest good. And that is really what our school board needs. We need people that are going to work together and work with everybody that's on the board to get the best for our kids and their education. We need to make sure that we're listening to all of the different stakeholders, we're listening to our teachers, we're listening to our parents, and we're making the decisions that make the most common sense. Right now there's you know things like wanting to volunteer to cover recess to give the teachers a break, and at some schools you can do it, but then at some schools you're, get, you're, you're told that you can't do that because the teacher's getting paid for it. There's just things that are common sense that are frankly not happening, and there's just barriers and breakdown in communication. So I am skilled, ready, and have the experience to take on these much um, large problems, and I am happy to serve the city of Fargo as I've served my country. A recent local editorial piece described you and some other school board candidates as extremists. What is your reaction to being labeled that way? Um, I know that I am a loud voice and that's, I was raised that way. I was raised to say what my values are, um, to share who I am and, you know, to frankly take up space. You know, as a, as a woman, I, I get to take up space and I get to be a part of the conversation. So if that makes me an extremist to some people, that's fine. Um, I choose not to, you know, tear others down to bring myself up. I choose to stand on my values and who I am, and that's what I will continue to do. I did write a, re uh, you know, a reactionary piece to, to that um, editorial, if you will, or opinion piece. Um, I'm, I'm not an extremist. I, <laughs> I'm far from it. Um, I'm a mom, a military veteran, and somebody who is willing to work hard for this community. Um, if your opinion is different than mine, I promise to listen to it. I promise to have a respectful conversation with you and hear from you. Um, I may not agree at the end of the day, but I will absolutely hear you out. I will absolutely take a look at your perspective and, and, and bring it into my overall decision making. I'd like to thank Fargo School Board candidate Allie Olenberger for joining me for tonight's one-on-one -on -one conversation. She is one of 15 candidates running for five open seats. The election is set for Tuesday, June 14th. Well, that will do it for this Wednesday night, May 25th, 2022. I'm Tom Tucker. Thanks for watching the Nightly Review.